Hey, Scott. Good morning, boys. Happy Friday. Do you have any yep. cameras like positioned in the parking lot to get any yep. sort of Jaden coverage? I know. It's uh, Jaden Watts 24-7 now, and obviously – you guys know today's a big day. We'll know more from Dan Quinn after practice, and we'll see if he gets a, gets in a limited session. My gut tells me if they are if there's any limitation, if they if they think he's not going to be 100, percent they're not going to play him. What time's practice today? Uh, I think 11, 11, 10, okay. 11 a.m. Right. Has there been any Jaden sightings like from the media? Have yeah. you guys seen no. him getting nope. in and out of his car? No one around the DMV, nothing? Nope, nothing. Mm. Dude, they're hiding him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nothing. is that unusual for a guy? Let's say Cornelius. Well, Cornelius, if you're concussion protocol, it's different. But let's just say if like a guy tweaked an ankle or something, is it unusual that you wouldn't see him through the week? Uh, no, you would usually see them like, you know, the training room is outside the locker room. So sometimes you see an injured guy, you know, going in between the locker room and the training room, or he's sitting at his locker. Uh, you know, sometimes that w- when guys are doing some bumps and bruises or healing up, you see them, you, they're visible. So, um, this, this is not surprising. I mean, he's the, the golden goose per se. So. Um, a little bit of a gamesmanship involved too, because they don't want to play their hand for Chicago. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what it's all about. It seems like the staff and the players though, are very confident in Marcus Mariota. Oh, totally. Like I was in that locker room on Wednesday and that was kind of one of my themes of questioning, talking to the guys of like, why do you have confidence in Marcus? What, what has he shown you? And they just go back to that veteran presence that's, gone through the battles of the NFL and Zach Ertz said something very interesting on Sunday after the game to me about Cliff Kingsbury's offense and how it's very similar to what Marcus ran in Oregon and he's never really had that type of a offense since he's been in the pros and it really fits his style of play and his skill set so uh, that that's something that you know I caught on with, 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 with what Zach said. So they have total confidence in Marcus. They think they can win, win with Marcus. And that's why I go back to the fact this is a marathon, not a sprint. If he's not 100%, talking about Jaden here, uh, I don't think he's going to play on Sunday. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's not like they're three and four or even four and three. I mean, you're five and two, so you can still you can still beat the Bears with a backup. You could. I'm not saying they will, but they could. And then – and you know, if Jaden just misses one week, I mean, it doesn't kill you. You still got a great chance of winning the division. And I understand the counter argument, guys, from fans of like, you know, this Bears game is big because it's a- NFC opponent. So when it comes down to nitty gritty time, December, January, and you're in that playoff push and starting to look at tiebreakers, yes, this win loss will, will come into play with, with this Bears game. But y- y- you look at the record, they're five and two. You got the Giants coming out uh, next week, which is probably an equally bigger game because it's a division game uh, and you want to take care of business in the division. So um, I get it. I know from a national perspective, you want to see Caleb versus Jaden. I want to see that. I know you guys want to see that, but he's a rookie. Um, You know, you want to play this smart. You don't want, you know, this is a totally different injury from RG three, you know, back in the day, but you don't want something like that. You want to be, be, play it smart uh, and let those ribs heal. What about some of the other injuries uh, on that report? Can you update us on that? Yeah, so we got uh, Brandon Coleman. Uh, He's another one to kind of monitor. We'll know more today from Dan Quinn. He's been hitting his markers, uh, according to Dan Quinn, which he said on Wednesday with his concussion protocol. We'll see if he gets in a limited session today in practice uh, because they've, they've they've done a really nice job of rotating those left tackles with Cornelius Lucas and Brandon Coleman. It's such a rarity. Like, you just don't see that in the NFL, uh, and it's working for them. So uh, it'd be great to have Brandon play uh, on Sunday, especially uh, against a, a physical, tough Bears defensive front, Montez Sweat revenge game. That'll be uh, interesting to see Montez back on the field on Sunday. And then the other injury to monitor is uh, Cleveland Farrell. Uh, he was limited on Wednesday, did not practice yesterday. Uh, so he's still banged up a little bit. We'll see if he has a limited session today as well. So those are the three, Jaden, Brandon, and Cleveland. Scott, okay. give us uh, what you might guess will happen with Manny Forbes this week. He had an interception last week. Nobody really giving him too much props for it, though, because it's kind of a gift. 
I uh, know. But he did he did do it. Um yep. and I felt like that was good. I think am I wrong? Is that his first career interception? I can't remember if he had no, one. No, no, he had one, he had one last against Denver. year in Denver. Okay. He, I remember it was yep. in, in Denver he had one. All right, so he um, second maybe. Um yeah. I thought it was a good moment for him, even though it was kind of right place, right time. But any sense that that's going to help earn him any playing time, more playing time, or what do you? Yeah, I, I I don't get that sense. Yeah. And I go back to last year's game with the Bears. Um, you know what happened with with DJ Moore, and uh, certainly there might be some PTSD there. And he acknowledged it when we talked to Emmanuel of how much he thinks about that game and how much he remembers about that game. So they're, they're going to be smart. You got Noah I. You got Benjamin St. Juice. I'm sure Emmanuel Forbes will, will be in some situations. So th- in terms of weaponry, guys, the Chicago Bears are loaded offensively. I mean, you look at that receiving core, D.J. Moore, Roma Dunze, Keenan Allen, and then you look at the running backs with uh, Swift and Roshan Johnson, and don't forget about Cole Komet, the tight end. There's going to be a lot to handle for this Washington defense. So, um, they, they got to cover. They got to get to Caleb. They got to make him uncomfortable uh, because this Chicago offense these last three weeks have been playing at a high level. Scott, how concerned is Joe Witt and the defensive staff? You touched on Caleb Williams there, not only with his passing, but he's getting it done with his legs too, especially in the last two games. He's got 90 yards rushing in his last two. And on the season, he's averaging nearly seven yards per carry. So if things break down, you know, trying to get the ball to his receivers, he can definitely make it happen with his legs, too. And that's the difficulty of a mobile, dynamic quarterback. They've, they've seen plenty already this year. Kyler Murray, Lamar Jackson. <laughs> they, go get, they see Jaden Daniels every day in practice. So uh, this is just par for the course. They've, they have that experience of, of knowing how to handle a dynamic, mobile quarterback that can st- extend plays with his legs, can beat you with his legs. So... Uh, I think having those experiences this year already with this group on defense will be beneficial. But again, you know, Caleb Williams, you can you can try to stop him, you can try to contain him, but he's just that good. He's the number one pick for a reason. And you know Caleb is going to have a little bit of an extra juice incentive to him on Sunday being the homecoming game. Bowie native, played high school ball at Gonzaga uh, in, in D.C., so he's going to have a lot of friends and family in the crowd. So there's going to be some extra uh, pop to him on Sunday. Yeah, and of course, um, I think it was CBS flexed the game because they wanted yes. to see Caleb against Jaden. Um, and, you know, one versus two, everyone wanted to see that. And then it's possible Jaden's not going to play. Yep, and that's that's unfortunate for the networks and, and yep. CBS. But, they, you know, Dan Quinn was asked directly about that on Wednesday uh, from one of the beat reporters. How much of an influence does you know, the network's wanting to see Jaden versus Caleb playing your playing to your decision of starting Jaden. He said absolutely none, none mm-hmm. whatsoever. So uh, th- clearly, you know, they're not thinking network TV or appeasing to the, to the national fan base. Right. They're thinking of Jaden, his health, um, his well-being. And again, I go back to the, the analogy of it's a marathon, not a sprint. You want him healthy come November, December, January, when it gets down to the nitty-gritty. Talking to Scott Abraham from ABC7, I saw that Cliff Kingsbury spoke some yesterday. What have you made of Cliff so far? I mean, obviously the offense is is firing on all cylinders. Do you like him? Guys, home run higher. I mean, he doesn't give much in a a press conference setting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he gave that fun little nugget about the uh, Taylor Swift play. That, That was awesome yesterday, but he's just been phenomenal. And I didn't really know what to expect from Cliff. Um, going into this year and how hungry he would be, how it's just been unbelievable. You can tell how much, how much fun he's having. And that's what Zach Ertz pointed to early in the season. Like he's never seen Cliff so happy or, or enjoying being back on the sidelines so much. And I think he enjoys working with this young group, working with a young quarterback. And this offense is just unbelievable. It's been so many years in DC since we've seen an offense, four points like this and have big chunk explosive plays pushing the ball down the field. It's a fun offense to watch. They're dynamic. They're, you know, throwing little wrinkles in here and there. Uh, Very, very impressed with Cliff Kingsbury. Now the challenge is going to be if they continue this and have all the success, make the playoffs, whatnot, 
how are you going to keep Cliff Kingsbury around? But that's a, that's a discussion for another day. So far, so good, certainly, for Cliff Kingsbury. Scott, you mentioned the playoffs there. This is obviously not a must-win game in Week 8, especially if Jaden doesn't go, but it's kind of important for playoff positioning. Right now, Washington is the two-seed in the NFC. Chicago's the seven-seed. So if Chicago wins, they'll move up. Washington moves down. They'll have the head-to-head in a tiebreaker if it comes down to that at the end of the season. So it, it is actually kind of an important game here in Week 8. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, if it comes down to tiebreakers and you lose this game, it's going to hurt you. And I think priority number one with every team in the NFL is take care of business in the division. Division games are, are basically double, right? I mean, you win, it's basically a double a double scenario and, and sets you up better in the division. And I think they're looking at it like that where they probably hold more value and weight to the Giants game next week because it's that division game, and right now they're in good position in the division. So, yeah, certainly to your point, NFC game, you know, tiebreakers down the line. But if you take care of business in the division, you win the division, you're going to get a home game in in the playoffs. How do you feel, Scotty, about the division right now in general? Obviously the Giants are dead. I mean, they're just not good. Yep. But Dallas has been outscored by 42 points. We saw what happened in their last game against Detroit. That was an embarrassment. They're 3-3. Three and three. They got a huge game against San Francisco Sunday night. And then Philly, now that Philly has all of their parts with uh, Devontae back from the concussion and A.J. Brown back from the injury he scored last week, um, I think they're going to start putting it together. How do you – do you think it just comes down to Washington and Philly, or do you still give Dallas a chance in the division? I'll say this in terms of your point with Dallas. I think <clears> – <throat> Sunday's game against San Francisco is going to be the big marker for me. They've had so much turmoil and in the headlines the last two weeks. They're coming off the bye. Do they come out and and be the Cowboys team that many expected and and punch San Francisco in the mouth and and win that game on the road, or are they going to fall on the sword and it's going to go downhill from there? I think this game against San Francisco is really going to be a turning point in the season for the Cowboys. So, I will withhold judgment on the Cowboys until after that San Francisco game. If they lose, I think they're done, and it's going to be a just a downward spiral for McCarthy and Jerry Jones and everybody down there. As for the Eagles, they were my pick going in to win the NFC East. I think defensively, they're very strong, much better than Dallas. You know the parts they have on offense. So right now, I think it's going to come down to Washington and Philly, and they still have two games, obviously, to play against each other. And Dallas, if they lose against San Francisco, I think they're done. If they somehow find a way to win and get a big win on the road, uh, I think it might be a three-horse race. Hmm. All right, we're going to allow you to have two predictions. One is with Jaden in the lineup and one with Marcus Mariota starting. You guys are so sweet. Um, (laughs) Let's see here. I'm going to go if Jaden plays, Washington will win by three. If Mariota plays, give me Chicago to win by seven. All right. All right. You're in the books. All right, guys. All right, have fun uh, at the game. i got to make two picks because we just don't know who's starting. Yep, yep. Thank right. you, buddy. Enjoy it. See you, guys. See you, buddy. Scott Abraham from ABC7. Let me check in on the polls. I think most people now, I didn't put – Two picks. Uh-huh. 68% are going with Washington right now. You can vote at Chunks Radio. I feel like people are like wildly optimistic, especially considering getting a little nicked up. And For some no reason, idea. on Instagram, it's even more optimistic. 77%. The Instagrammers, <laughs> sports junkies are on Instagram. They're always higher than the people on Twitter. You know what it is? People love, get size for offense. Offense just gets you fired up. I've been saying They're sold. that forever. No, I know, but I mean, it makes, that forever. it makes you, I think, irrationally believe. You get exuberant when you yeah. see when you see leading the league in scoring at 31.1, tied right. with the Ravens. It's and a I good do place think to be. Seeing Marcus perform so well, he only yeah. had five incompletions, two touchdown passes. More and more people just think, oh, well, Cliff is cooking. It doesn't matter who's back there. And they just supreme confidence that Marcus is going to do it again. Uh, it matters who's I back. Think there. It I think so. Yeah. It matters who's back. And I there. wouldn't expect that type of performance again. I mean, that's. That I was, agree. That was really good. I think it was maybe more of a. And again, than I, I'm sorry. I know you guys don't like to hear this. You got to factor in who he was playing against. 
course. Don't you? Context matters. Kicks, sure. don't you? I, I do. Of course that matters. I mean, would have he done that against if they were playing Houston? Or Philly, or you know, probably not. You know, Detroit. I mean, probably I not. Do, I'm not going to completely rule it out, but I understand your point. I think it's fair. I just think that, and maybe I'm the only one that thought this, but that the nature of the way he made the plays, I'm not sure it's replicable by him. Yeah. Well, we'll see.